Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Professor Sarah Zhang. Uh, I'm very delighted to give this uh, keynote speech and to the International Conference on Advanced and in Construction Material and Structures. Uh, the topic of my presentation is research and the development of a water resistant MOC, uh, which is a green cement. The full name of uh, MOC is magnesium oxychloride cement. So I will talk a little bit more details later. Uh, myself, uh, I'm a researcher focused on green and construction building materials. Uh, I'm interested in sustainability in construction and resilience of infrastructures. I'm from the Western Sydney University School of Engineering, Design and the Building Environment. And I'm the discipline leader for civil environment engineering and also the university research team champion on environment and sustainability. So I divided my talk into five parts. Firstly, I will give you a background introduction of the material. And then secondly, I'm going to talk about the new green cement we development, the basic formula design. And we actually investigate the effect of a flash and silica fuel on the water resistance. So in section three, I'm going to give you the details of our study on the effect of a flash and silica fuel on the water resistance out of the green cement MOC. Also, in the fourth part, we study the effect of a phosphate on the uh, flash silica film, the hybrid the MOC, to continue to improve the water resistance of the material. So finally, I'll give you the conclusions. Let me start with the introduction. So as we know, environment and sustainability has been the long-term issue uh, for the globe. And of course, uh, we are in a challenging time. Uh, we need to uh, significant cut the emission of uh, carbon dioxide. And then by 2050, we need to get a zero uh, emission. And of course, we know uh, construction building material, among the construction building material, concrete is the most uh, widely used construction building materials. And of course, for the concrete, a main ingredient is the cement. Okay, so but uh, the uh, manufacturing of a cement emit a large amount of a CO2. So as you can see in this figure, and then the global CO2 emissions uh, from rising cement production over the past century is shown. So you can clearly show see the uh, rapid increase of the carbon uh, dioxide emission uh, with the years uh, due to the manufacturing of the cement. And actually, uh, the CO2 emission from manufacturing cement takes 5 to 8% of the global carbon emission. Um, so it's a, a big issue uh, how to reduce uh, the carbon emission due to the application of uh, manufacturing of the cement. And of course, there's uh, many different efforts, uh, various research has been made to reduce, to get a green cement. And one of the uh, green cement, uh, which is named magnesium oxychloride cement, MOC, is also called sor sorrel cement, is actually a very green cement. This cement uh, usually are made of uh, three uh, materials. One is the light burned magnesium. Uh, this is the MGO powder. And usually this uh, MGO powder is calcited at 700 to 900 uh, degrees C. Then another material is the magnesium chloride as shown in this picture and also water. So when the magnesium chloride is uh, mixed with the water, and then the magnesium chloride solution is formed and then mixed with the uh, MGO powder and then that will form the MOC paste. So during the manufacturing of the MOC, uh, there's uh, four main hydration phases. 
are formed. Uh, but one of the most important hydration phases is the phase five. So this is the main dominant hydration phase. And then, uh, but this phase uh, will um, stay will stay stable uh, when it's below 100 degree, but if it is uh, over 100 degree, this is the, uh, phase will not be very stable. So uh, this material is uh, considered a green cement MOC. Uh, firstly, because there is a low energy consumption uh, during the manufacturing, and also the uh, calcination temperature is 700 to 900 degree which is much lower than those for the normal cement. And also during the manufacturing of uh, uh, MOC, there is a low carbon dioxide emission. And uh, another thing is it is cured in room temperature, which is different from normal uh, cement and concrete. Another uh, advantage is it has a good bonding to the waste which is actually even more environment friendly. So MOC has been regarded as a green cement. It is a very environment friendly material. Uh, the advantages and the application uh, here in this slides, we are going to talk about the advantages and the application. Firstly, this material is a faster setting and also uh, it has very high early strengths. Also, its density is very low uh, comparing to the normal cement. As a result, it is very light. And also the compressive strength is very high. Another inherent uh, property is it is good fire uh, resistance. So inherently, it is a fire resistant, which is a very good uh, fire resistant material. And also it has a high abrasion properties and a low thermal and sound conductivity. So this is good for the thermal and soundproof boards, for decoration boards. And also it is unaffected by oil, grease, and paint. Excellent bonding ability to a wide range of fillers, also including waste, and also low alkalinity. So the applications, uh, actually MOC product has been wildly uh, produced and then used, but mostly for indoor applications, okay? And then for example, these pictures show some of the applications and then they can be used as a repair mortar, mold board and industry floor and fireproof walls, sound thermal insulation boards, decoration panels, paving blocks and floor tiles, also MOC boards reinforced by glass fiber and plant fiber, and also reinforced uh, by other like uh, uh, wood timber faced, sawdust, rice husk, those kind of things. And also wood-like product, which has a nice appearance. However, uh, in spite of all the advantage of this material, the application has been mostly limited to the indoor application. Uh, the main reason is uh, the material has poor water resistance. So in this slide, uh, I show some problems, uh, including uh, warp distortion and then brittleness. But the main problem, which has limited its application, is the poor water resistance. So poor water resistance means if the material is contact with the water for long term or very moisture condition for long term, and then the material properties will be degraded very seriously. seriously. So this actually has restrained the application of this material mainly indoor because outdoor often there's a rainwater or very moisture condition which is, uh, is not good. And also the main reason for the poor water resistance because the phase five or hydration phases becomes unstable. And of course, there are some other problems. All these problem to somewhat is also related to the water resistance. Okay. 
So the general solution to improve the water resistance is formula adjustment or adding other additives, et cetera. So in this research, uh, we actually uh, develop, uh, further develop the water resistance of the MOC. And in this second part, I'm going to talk about the material and the basic formula design uh, in our research. So as we mentioned, uh, there's a three basic ingredients uh, for this material, MgO powder, MgCO2, and water, H2O. And also the ratio of MgO to MgCl2 is called the molar ratio M. And also the ratio of uh, uh, water to MgCl2 is called the molar ratio H. So we use M and H to denote the molar ratio. So in our research, uh, we actually tried a different combination uh, for M. Uh, M range from seven, nine to 11. And also we fixed the H molar ratio to 13. Uh, so this is the, from a wide range of a literature view. So from literature, and then people have suggested that this uh, is the most promising uh, molar ratios for the water resistance. So we do some trials based on this recommendation. And also we test the compressive strength of the MOC. And also the orange one is the residual compressive strength. So that means after uh, emerging in water for 28 days, uh, and then the residual compressive strength. And also the ratio here is actually the water resistance coefficient, uh, which is the uh, ratio of the residual strength to the compressive strength, to the regional strength. And then the gray one is the flexural strength. Of course, the yellow one is the residual flexural strength. And E is the Young's modulus. So for this three mix design, uh, we test the, all these compressive strengths residual compressive strength, flexural strength, residual flexural strength, and the Young's modulus. So as you can see, M7H13, uh, this is the compressive strength, 110 uh, megapascal, but the residual compressive strength is only 18.75. So the coefficient of a water resistant for compression is 0.17. And for the flexural strength, it's 16.4. And then after emerging in water, the flexural strength becomes 5.74. So the coefficient is 0.35. And then Young's modulus is 15.1, which is quite low. And also this ratio is also quite low. Then if you look at the M9H13, uh, the compressive strength is 118 megapascal. And then after immersion in water, and then we still get 30.78, the water resistant uh, coefficient uh, increased to 0 0.26. And for the flexural strength, uh, before, before water immersion, it's 12.3 megapascal. And then after immersion in water is 4.43, the coefficient is 0 0.36. And then the Young's modulus is 21.9, which is quite a reasonable value. Then for the M11H13, uh, this is a compressive strength. And then this is a residual compressive strength, the ratio, and also flexural strength, uh, residual flexural strength, and then the ratio. So this ratio is 0 0.23. So although the flexural strength ratio is higher than the M9, but uh, uh, the flexural strength coefficient is much uh, lower than M9H13. So from this figure, if we consider the ratio uh, for compression uh, coefficient and also for flexural, and then M9H13 uh, seems uh, most promising among the three. And also we conduct more tests. Uh, this is the setting time and the flowability. Uh, flowability, fluidity test. And then the orange line shows the initial, initial setting time of a MOC. The blue line shows the uh, final setting time of a MOC. 
And then the dotted red line shows the slump flow of the MOC. So as we can see with the increase of uh, molar ratio M uh, from seven, nine to 11, and then there's a, a decrease of the setting time. And also the slump flow is decreased. And also from here, we can see uh, when M equal to nine, we get a very good value. The other things we also tested uh, the crystal phase uh, by the XRD macro scale study test. And then these figures shows the uh, crystal phase analysis by XRD for M7H13, M9H13, M11H13. So we can see this uh, dark point is the P5 phase five. Uh, which is the uh, desired phase uh, for the MOC. And uh, this uh, small triangle uh, is the MGO powder. So you can see in the M11H13, there is a still a high amount of MGO powder. So actually the ex uh, excessive amount of MGO powder, which has not been uh, reacted with the other ingredients, uh, this is a not a good thing because it's uh, um, uh, not very stable. And also this little triangle shows the MgOH2, uh, which is a gel-like uh, material, which is also not good for the MgO MOC. So also this figure uh, confirmed, uh, actually M11 is not good uh, because there's a high amount of MGO and a high amount of MGOH2 and M9H13 is still the best among the three. And also in this figure, uh, we do more uh, um, analysis, including this XRD and then this SEM analysis. And then this is the cross-section of the MOC after emerging in water for 28 days. So you can see this is the core part. The core part uh, shows actually this is the phase five crystal. So which are actually like a needle-like faces. This is the phase five, which is the desired phase, uh, which keep the material stable. But the outer layer, uh, you can see the outer layer so actually already uh, becomes a uh, very uh, loose, this is called the blue side flakes. And then this is shows the MGOH2 flakes. This is already very powdered away and then very loose, uh, which is not uh, stable. So this is also confirmed. Uh, M9H13 is the best. And then M11H13 and already uh, de-layered like this, which is not uh, very stable. We also continue to do the actual making for M9H13, uh, which is the, the best among the uh, three. And then we found the yellow part is actually the phase five. So you can see there's a large area, large proportion of uh, close to 70%, which is the stable uh, phase five. And then also there's a small amount of unreacted MGO. So from this uh, res uh, research, and then we can confirm the basic formula design. So before I continue to talk on uh, other effects, just to uh, give you a summary. And uh, we can see the setting time and the flowability or fluidity is decreased with the increasing molar ratio of M. Uh, the mechanical properties increase with the increasing molar ratio of M in all the three mixes and the fixed uh, phase file is the main hydration product. Uh, the water resistance increase from M7 to M11 due to moderate uh, excessive uh, MGO helps to fill the pores in MOC, but too much is uh, making it not stable. Uh, the MgCl2 is consumed in this tertiary system totally, while the molar ratio of uh, M increase uh, excessive NGO exists in the hydration product. The cement paste may be damaged by the excessive uh, crystallization stress of a gradual MGO or H2 formulation. 
to avoid the liquidity of the fresh car paste and the more excessive MGO in MOC, M9H13 is chosen as the basic mix. So next, uh, I'm going to show the effect of a flash and the silicon film on the water resistance of MOC. Why do we do this research? Uh, because from the uh, form basic formula design, uh, we got an H M9, H13, which is the best among the three. Uh, but you can see uh, the water retention coefficient for uh, compression is 0 0.26. Then the water uh, retention coefficient for flexure is 0 0.36. So it's still pretty slow. Uh, the industry requirement is at least this water resistant coefficient should achieve 0 0.8. Okay, so for that reason, we need to continue to think about improved uh, the water resistance. And the flash and the silica film, they are all, uh, they are both byproduct from the industry. Flash is the byproduct from mine, mining, and uh, they have been used uh, to increase the the properties of a concrete cementitious material, including MOC. So here we actually uh, uh, add a different proportion of a flat ash, FA, uh, ranges from 10%, 20% to 30%. And we also uh, add a different proportion of a silica film, SF, ranges from 10%, 20% to 30%. And then to see the hybrid effect of a flash and silica film, we hybrid the silica film and the flat ash and try the different uh, uh, mix proportion. So we try the silica film 10%, flat ash 20%, silica film 15%, flat ash 15%, and silica film 20%, flat ash uh, 10%. So we fix the total amount up to 30% uh, because from the literature, it seems that the max amount is 30%, which is gives the most promising result. And FC Pro is the flexual, uh, is the compressive strength of the material at 28 days. And also FF is the flexual strength. E is the Young's modulus. WC28 means this is the uh, water retention coefficient for compression. Uh, after emerging the material in water for 28 days. And also we actually also tested for 56 days after water emission. And then this is 28 uh, days in immersion in water for the flexural strength. And also this is also uh, 56 days for the flexural strength. So you can see, uh, let's see the increase of the, the change of the flag compressive strength. So with the increase of the flat edge from 10 to 20 to 30%, so we can see the compressive strength is increased, uh, not too much, but is increased. And also the flexural strength is also increased. And the Young's modulus, uh, stay very um, varies, but not too much. And also the WC28 days is actually increased with the increase of a flat ash. Uh, with 30% uh, of a flat ash is achieving 0 0.5. Okay. And also for 56 days, and also this is the increasing. And for the flexural strength uh, coefficient, and then with the increase of a flat ash, and then the result is uh, very good. And then it's quite stable and achieve up to 0, uh, 1.0. And also for 56 days and also achieve a very reasonable good result. Then let's see the variation of a silica fuel. So with the increase of a silica fuel from 10 to 20 to 30%, we also see a slight increase of the flexural strength and also the uh, increase of the uh, flexural strength and compressive strength, and also Young's modulus. Then for the WC28 days for compression, uh, water resistance, and then we can see there's an increase. The value is 
even better than the flat edge. And then for silica film up to 30%, we got a 0.82, which is quite good. And also for 56 days, it's also quite good, uh, up to 0.8%. And then for the flexural strength, this is an increase uh, comparing to those without the silica film, although it's not as high as the flat ash. And also for 56 is also similar. Then let's see the combination. Okay. So we actually with the silica film 15%, silica uh, flat ash 15%. Um, let's see the uh, WC28, uh, we get a 1.0 and which is higher than 10% silica film, 20% flat ash, which is 0 0.97, and then also 0 0.89 for silica film, 20%, flat ash, 10%. Although both of these two values are quite reasonable, quite good, but this uh, silica film, 15%, flat ash, 15% shows the best. And then if you consider the flag show strength, and also this one uh, seems very good, 0 0.64. And also if you consider the 56 days, this is also quite good. So uh, comparing among all these mixed design, and then we find this hybrid mix, uh, same amount of silica film flat ash at 15% get the best result for the water resistant coefficient for compression 1.0 for the flexural 0 0.64 okay so this one is absolutely a good result uh, 0 0.64 is also quite good but still uh, is lower than the industry demand the 0 0.8 but then we will analyze, we actually analyze the pore structure distribution. Uh, want to find why uh, this is the result, especially comparing these two different combinations. Why silica film 15%, flat ash 15% is the most promising mix. So we do this pore structure distribution analysis. So you can see. Uh, this bar top, uh, the different color shows the size of the pores. Uh, this blue, dark blue, uh, shows the very micro pore, pores. The diameter is greater than 5,000 nanometers. Then the yellow one is the large capillary pores. And the diameter is 100 to 5,000 Nm. Then the gray one is the middle capillary pores. The diameter is 50 to 100 Nm. The other orange one, 10 to 50 uh, nanometers, uh, is the mass of pores. And then there's an even smaller pores. This is the light blue. Uh, the diameter is less than 10 Nm. This is a very gel micro pores. Okay, so here we can see this shows all the mixer design from the uh, basic formula without any additives and flat ash 1030, silica film 1030, and also uh, different combinations of uh, flash and silica film, of course, including our uh, the desired one, the best one. Let's see uh, the distribution uh, of this one. So you can see among all these uh, figures, then this one has the largest proportion of uh, micropores and also almost a large, quite a large proportion for the mesopause. So that means if you add the area of the orange and also light blue, and then this one has the largest area for the very minor and macro and mesopause. And then the large pore uh, proportion is very little. So uh, of course the existence of a large pores uh, result in a loose structure, and which is harmful for the strength and the water resistance of MOC. So we can see the addition of acidic film and flat ash optimize the pore structure of the MOC and form a more compact structure. And that as a result, the water resistance is improved. So the pore structure uh, of the MOCs, especially for the SF15 
flash 15%, uh, shows the reason, uh, give a further evidence why this mixed design is the best uh, for the water resistance. And also, we also do the X-ray mapping uh, for this hybrid SF 15%, flash 15% MOC. So we can see large proportion is the, the yellow, which is the phase five, and then the ideal uh, dominated phase. And also there are some excess amount of MGO powder and also the uh, other materials uh, formed during the uh, hydration. So before we continue, just to give a summary of the effect of a flat ash and the silly perfume. The addition of a flat ash and silica fuel, uh, as well as the hybrid of a flat ash and silica fuel, increase the water resistance significantly and enhance the mechanical properties slightly. The silica fuel flat ash and the combination of a flat ash and silica fuel optimize the pore structure of MOC, which result in higher density and compressive strengths. The gel lag MG, SI, Cl, H2O phase formed in the mixture helps to improve the water resistance of the hardened MOC specimens after a prolonged time in water. The hybrid flat ash and silica film leads to optimize the pore structure with best water resistance for the M9H13 flash 15% and silica film 15%. And the compressive strength retention coefficient is high, but the flexural retention strength is 0.64, still need to be improved. So next, we try to improve the flexural water uh, resistance. So we actually investigated the effect of a phosphate on the uh, flexural strength uh, of the MOC. So we have a, we used the three kinds of a phosphate and they are listed in this table. And then we have a, the different mixed design. This is the basic formula, M9H13. And then we uh, use that, we uh, try the different effect of a phosphate on the, uh, the best one that we achieved so far. M9 is 13 and plus 15% silica film, say 15% flat ash. We also try the different proportion. We fix the proportion like 1% for this phosphate. So um, we conducted a mechanical test and a water resistance test, including, of course, compressive strength, flexural strength, water resistance for compression, water resistance for flexural. And we have uh, these sample uh, numbers. So we also tested the density of these materials. So uh, as we can see, uh, the, this is the pure formula without adding anything. And WC28 is 0 0.26, uh, flexural is 0 0.22. And then uh, after adding this different uh, phosphate, we can see uh, the uh, value for the uh, compressive strength, which is actually quite high and then increase the uh, quite significantly. And also the flexural strength is also increased, uh, but quite stable. And also for the water resistance for compression, we can see there's a, a significant increase with the sample number one achieve 1%. And sample, uh, sample number two also one 100%. And uh, sample three and sample four, they are still quite reasonable. And then for the flexural strength, water resistance. So we can also see number one achieve 0 0.64 and also number two uh, achieve significant increase for the flexural strength. We get a 0 0.96. Although number three is also quite high, 0 0.94, and number four is also quite reasonable, uh, 0 0.84. So certainly uh, you can see after adding this three table of phosphate, we achieve significant increase of the water resistance for flexion, but uh, still uh, remain very strong, uh, good value for the compression. 
Okay. And also we do the SEM of the uh, hardened phosphate flash and the silica film MOC. And we can see this is the M9H13, the pure uh, mix, mix. And then we can see uh, we, there's uh, some uh, neat needle-like crystals can be observed. And then this is growing on the inner surface of the pore structure in M9 and H13, as mentioned before. And then these are the phase five crystals and which keep the MOC stable. Then for B, this is the M9 H13, uh, flash 15%, silica 15%. Uh, so we can uh, also see uh, the needle-like crystals, but the needle-like crystals this time is actually thinner and longer. So the thickness of the crystals is reduced and the MOC matrix around the pore is densified. Then for C and D, so these are two the really good uh, water resistant for both compression and for flexural. So we can also see, and then there are some gel-like faces formed. This armrose face is formed in the space between MOC paste and flash or silica film particles. And then these are short face uh, fire crystals and they are growing in the gaps. Network uh, consists of uh, crystals, gel-like bases and the particles actually in strong, uh, enhance or strengthen the whole structure of the MOC. So this is also explains why this material has better water resistance than the other. Then for D, uh, after adding MFP 1%, so by adding MFP into the paste, the shape of the crystalline phase file is changed. And three tape can be found. They are the six short crystals, thin short crystals, and the fibrous uh, crystals. These three type of crystals connect to each other and also forms very strong network. So this is also explains the very high uh, water resistance of this material. So before I finish, I uh, would like to conclude uh, the addition of a flash and silica film increase the water resistance significantly and they enhance the mechanical properties slightly. The silica film, flat ash, and the combination of a silica film and a flash optimize the pore structure of MOC, which result in higher density and compressive strength. The optimal formula design uh, Molar ratio nine and then uh, H13 plus 15% flash, 15% silica film, achieve the water resistance coefficient of 1.0 and 0.95 for compressive strength with water immersion of 28 days and five, 56 days respectively. And then the addition of uh, phosphate into flash silica film, MOC, can significantly improve the compressive strength and flexural strength and decrease the density. This helps to make the lightweight ultra high strength MOC. The water resistance of MOC is also improved by phosphate with very high residual compressive strength and flexural strength, which is around 130 megapascal and 20 megapascal. By the uh, SEM study, uh, Amro's phase and the phase file with different shapes are formed in the phosphate added MOC. And this is the main reason for the improved mechanical strength and water resistance. Before I finish, I would like to acknowledge the contribution from my team members, Dr. Ying Yang Guo, Dr. King So, and also the fund support uh, from the government and from the Australian Research Council and from the uh, company uh, which make this research possible. This research has been published in public media, the conversation uh, in 2019, and also uh, is broadcasted in the a ABC Radio National as a featured program. And also I was interviewed by six other medias uh, 
including from Australian and overseas, and reposted in over 20 links. Uh, more details can be found from the publications. There's a one 2021 publication. Uh, we talk about the development of water-resistant MOC by adding silica film and flat ash journal, uh, publishing journal of uh, cleaner production. And in 2020, uh, we published in the construction and the building material, a paper entitled Magnesium Oxychloride Cement Based String Panel Cementitious Composite. And in this research, we also added the fibers, uh, uh, polyethylene fibers to achieve both high strength and ductility. And also in the Structure Concrete Journal in 2020, uh, we published a journal paper named as Effect of a Flash on Mechanical Properties of uh, MOC and the Water Attack. Uh, and in 2018, we published a review paper entitled as Recent Events in Magnesium Oxychloride Cement. So the research uh, presented in this uh, keynote speech is still under uh, consideration for another journal. Hopefully that can be published in a journal very soon. Thank you very much.